I wanted to touch on um, there's a lot of talk about transactional relationships. Yeah. And, like you, you've defined relationships, and it seems obviously we're not really relating to one another. But what's happening is that there's a lot of transaction between men and women. It's very su- surface level. What do you think that's all about? It's because you don't feel safe enough to go deep into your feelings and actually saying what you need. So you'd rather re- rely on survival mm. to say, if you can do this, this and this, instead of going, what do I actually need? People are not doing mm. a lot of self-reflection. Mm. But is that really, a, I'm, obviously I'm speaking from a devil yeah. Africa point of view, but is that really a bad thing? Obviously, in the time that we're living in, things are hard. Yeah. Let's take, for example, women and... Because um, we're women, we're talking women, women stuff. Women saying cash at me and women, you know, wanting nice dinners, a nice lifestyle, and men are able to afford them that. Is that such a bad thing? Yes. Right. See, well, I, well, this is where I, I'm a slightly different. It's not that I don't think that transactional relationships are not healthy, because mm. I don't think they're healthy. I think there's much more to our existence as human beings. We need to dig deeper. If mm. that's the pinnacle of what you think that life's about, you're lost. Because mm. you're not even scratching the surface. You're in the lower three chakras. You're in the lower three chakras. What are the women getting doing? that, you know, all the intangible stuff somewhere else? What does that but, mean? So she's getting that set level of safety from somewhere else like another man or maybe another woman um and from multiple people yeah and then she's able to draw her financial needs are met elsewhere listen is that a bad thing and that's the reality of life but i just feel right she's we all yearn we all yearn instinctually to be fully met what Does that, that have mean? To be people one are, people yes. argue that that's yes. not possible. So th- the argument about um, polygamy being natural and it's symbiotic no, that, with human women, nature women, is wrong. Women then. actually um, benefit better off of polygamy than men do. Interesting. I don't know. Why? I don't know. Men, women benefit more because they have more choice. From polygamy? How do they have choice? Yeah. Because when, let's say a woman has to, she can go wherever she wants, the mm-hmm. same oh, as Oh, do you mean when a woman is just polyandry. Poly- polygamy? Yeah, like she that's can go poly- just... Not she is a, um, sorry, what's polyandry. the one? Polyandry. Do you mean when a woman can have No, but she partners? benefits not only from multiple women, she benefits from the man as well. Multiple yeah. men or just one? Just, well, it depends on both sides. She either benefits from the woman, whereas the man, he has to then extend his containment to contain more women. But that's where I think that there is no benefit to me. If you was like... How can you benefit me when you're stretched and spread so thin? You're not... You... Because she's doing less. Because How am I doing less if when there's... If there's more women around to take care of the children... But there's not more m- masculine around. Do you no, know what I mean? The woman can't give me what it is that I'm, I'm looking for. I actually read this... St- it, it, it gets very into it in terms of what it does to hormonal levels and things like that, but women benefit more off of it. I but disagree. The, the point of what I wanted to make about survival is... The reason being, when you're trying to make it all transactional, it's very ego-based. Anything based on survival is based on ego. It's where your traumas sit. So Mm. if you're picking a partner based off the egoic need, you're basing the partner that you need off of ego. Because your ego is your false self, it's not you. Mm. So when you base it off of those things, rather than who you truly are, You can match with 50,000 people Mm. because it's off things that are constructs, like safety. Now, I, a lot I've heard a lot, and also myself, I have certain yeah. standards that I need a man yeah. to come with. And um, the, a lot of women say, I'm not going to talk to a man unless if he earns six figures. I'm not going to talk to a man on if he does this type of job, X, Y, Z. Is that a bad thing for women to have these types I, of... Uh, these types of I, um, can I talk? Can and then I'll let you talk. I'll shut up then. Yeah. No, 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 go no, for you it. Go it. I was having this conversation with a friend the other day. And I seen, I don't know, you know, it's like, oh, if he can't pay for this bill, then he's not a man. Was it, did you, I it, saw that. Yeah? I posted something like that just the other day. And I sat there and I thought to myself, okay, the mascul- what the what the masculine has to do anyway mm. on its own, mm. we are thinking from a very selfish position. Right. We are coming from an I standpoint, what we can get rather than what we can actually give. That's what's wrong with our society anyway, for the first point. It's all good looking pretty and looking nice. You can get pretty anywhere. And that's a transactional society. Yeah, you can get pretty anywhere. Mm. 
But when you're saying to a man, you have to do this, 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 and this, when, and this is me as a mother, and when I hear these points of views from, and I mean this in the nicest possible way, women who contain on a daily basis for a family, especially on a, her own, she understands how exhausting it is mm. to go, I have to make sure that I have this sorted for school, this sorted, so the bills are paid, mm. this are paid, this are paid. I want a man to come in and basically not take over the, because I would never, I think it's unfair to go, you have to cover absolutely everything because he's a human being. Mm. He's not a cat, he's not a pay pig. Mm. We have to consider the energy that has to be spent for him to contain not only you, but any children that you have. Right. When we're going in and going, well, if he's not paying for this bill, then he's not a man. But are you looking at the fact he may be done with money? A man may have 10 grand in his account, but he's spending six grand on a restaurant. You want a man who's smart with money, who can pay, who can make investments. You can't find that out from a date. Just because he's bought you a bottle of, you can't find that out. I think, I like to think that women understand that. They're not gonna understand a, a whole man's um, financial situation of a first date. But I think, would you say that their willingness to want to look after and co accommodate that whole date is in a woman's mind you know yes. that whole thing where oh, if a man things. asks you out on a date yeah if a man asks you out on a date he's already acknowledged with you what he can provide for you mm. if a man walks into your house and this is a funny thing this is actual fact a man will be viewing and scanning your environment to yes, see if do. he they can do that. afford you yeah mm. they do if that. he can't afford you he knows there's no point but when we as a standpoint don't view that they do that we're going well you need to pay for this you need to pay for that we just sound like idiots yeah because they've already made can i afford you but i don't think that's fair because i don't think all men are thinking with that level of responsibility oh they do not all of them no, no they I'm will sorry. pay attention they to... some of them just don't care i've seen oh, it no but when we're looking you're looking at the exception uh, perhaps but i'm just yeah. saying it might be what they th i don't even know if it's the exception actually all i know is that as a woman you need to uh, they might come in thinking that, but that doesn't mean that every man that comes into your life has assessed that. I feel like that's a scary, like, don't think that because men will still come into your life. They will still try and have access to you. Even if they think they can't afford you, they don't deserve you. No, but they, they also tell you reasons. what they want. Sometimes, Sometimes, but also they yeah. don't. Mm. This is where Listen. it's so important, the things that I teach, because m women kind of are expecting this playbook, a man to step into your life with like, this is what I'm no, about, this is what no, I do. No, he won't tell not. it, but what he will do is behave in a certain way, and then you, as a woman, it's your job to look at what he's showing you and deduce what you need to deduce. Yes, exactly. Because he won't always you tell you. You have to discern. Yeah. You have to yeah. discern. Yeah. Some women have a better ability to discern exactly. than others. Yeah? yeah. Some women, when they don't have the ability to discern, they discern off material things. Yeah, and it's not just that. Instead of the emotional. Yeah. 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 And it's a combination just... of two, though. I really want to just say that because... Oh, no, you, ne you need... Yeah. Listen, I'm not going to allow a man to come into my life and bleed me dry how no yeah. but that's not what i'm looking for yeah i know exactly what i need do you know what i need i need someone to provide me a safe space so i can express how i feel mm. that's much mm. important than what he can pay for yeah for me it's a bit of both because you know we take the hit when it comes to child rearing and our economic standpoint mm. i want children so therefore, I am looking at what he can provide for me in terms of if I need to take some time off to have a child, I want to be sure that the man that I've chosen is going to be able to make sure that I'm going to be okay for that. So I am looking but at that. when he leads, yeah. that it's his ability to lead yeah. and let you know that that's first. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, 100%. Yes. His ability to lead will make you feel safe. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to go in with the X, Ys and Zs because he's leading. Mm. When you're receptive, mm. you can trust him, yeah? Mm. Because your nervous system, we are naturally in tune to pay attention to our nervous system. We know exactly when we don't feel safe. Yeah, yeah. And that's when you pay attention we do to know. yourself. Yeah. yeah. But if you don't, if you ignore yourself, you will walk into yeah. every bad decision yes. because you're not paying attention yes. to yourself. Yes. But when you don't feel, when you do feel safe, Sometimes if you've got a skewed perception 
of what healthy masculine actually is and goes, oh, okay, I see that and feel unsafe. Mm. I'm going to castrate the life out of him. I see this day in, day out with women because they don't know how to surrender. Mm. Surrendering is part of the problem. So when we go in and go, can you pay for, are you, is that surrendered energy? Mm. Yeah. Or is that going, I pay more attention to who you are as a person rather than what you have. Because if you lose what you have, what do you have? Yes. Mm. And this is where the overlap is. And I think it's so super important. Like, who are you? You know, when I was speaking a little bit about how do you vet somebody? And I was saying, you know, you look at their life. What, who are they? What do they demonstrate outside of you? It's easy for you to step in and look at how he is with you. But what does he demonstrate outside of you? What does he show in mm -hmm. terms of his life? Like, is he a big umbrella? Right. And, and you umbrella. can see that in so many different ways you know and, and just the what is going on in with him but like you need to please like I've seen it so much and especially as black women women sitting here I don't know sorry if you're mixed race I'm yes sure, mixed yeah. Race, yeah. but as mixed black whatever you want to call it you know uh, especially for us it's really important that we pay attention to um, whether a man is that container because unfortunately so many of us we're sort of uh, coached and reared into this like expectation that we, we shouldn't expect that. And I had to look around and look at the results of seeing it, not just for me, I cut that in my own life, thank God, but uh, looking at other people around me, you know, whether that's family and friends and seeing what was going on and thinking, you've not chosen somebody that could be what you want or needed them to be. Mm. We get to make that choice. Like mm. we literally are the gatekeepers. Women, we have that power. We can, like no man can, live on except through a woman yeah no man yeah so therefore well, that the gravity of that responsibility the gravity of your choices and who you choose to partner yeah. up with it's huge and once we and realize then, our responsibility we can start making better choices there becomes a level of learning how to be safe enough to reveal who you are yeah. as well if you don't reveal who you are as a woman yes and that's a lot of the time we don't mm. we're yes. too busy watching them and what they're doing because we're for when you when you are watching them, I can automatic I can tell from a conversation with a woman whether she feels safe or not. Mm. Just from a ten second conversation, if she's too much focusing on them, yep. she's like trying to scope you out. It's like feeling in when you grow up around chaos, you perceive chaos. Mm. Yeah, the way your brain thinks is what you're going to perceive. Mm. There's a lot of things in the news about rape this and x y z that there's a lot of things that happen between masculine to the feminine and feminine to the masculine mm. but we have to be aware of where our trauma programming is mm. now that's that kind of leads on to my next question which is about social media yeah um how do you think that is influencing relationships it's, it's really bad mm. it's really bad the reason being is if something is, if you're perceiving something 24 seven, but it's not the true reality on a percentage standpoint, yeah. you're programming your mind to go, men are unsafe. Yeah. Men don't protect yeah. us. So what are we yeah. gonna do? Karate yeah. chop them as soon as we see a man? Yeah. Mm. We and are straight up competing with them on a daily basis. And what? who gets anything out of this? No we one. were just saying literally like, I was just explaining how the, the pe what you see online is not reality. It's you know, not. people forget. Yeah. It's like you think because you see something online that, that that's what it is representative in the big yeah. wide world. No, the percentage of people that sit responding to certain things, these are a certain type of person with a certain type of energy, certain type of life. It's an that echo will, chamber. Yes, it's an echo, it's chamber. An echo chamber. So when people do yeah. that, it's like, no, please step back. Remember, this is not representative of the real world. I but think, the thing is, oh, nothing Karen. happens in a, in a vacuum. And I'm going to give you an example. You know, the UN report that came out um, about, I think it was UN, um, about women who are under the age of 25, about 90, something shocking, like 98% of them have experienced some kind of sexual harassment yes. se or, or sexual um, abuse mm -hmm. before the age of um, 25. And mm -hmm. under 30, it drops down to 80 something mm -hmm. percent, which is still extremely so high. high. But when you look at paedophilia... Just to to finish off, do you, would that would those very hard facts presented, and women are are, are speaking on mass about their experiences mm. and are to a level trauma bonding, but also yeah. raising awareness. 
Would you still say that that is people online going on and on and on in an echo chamber? Or are these really important things I have to be this is a This is a generational thing. Mm. The reason being this is a generational thing. The talking about it or the actual the, the actual result right. of like it. The, we have to go back. We have to go all the way back. But it's real. You'd agree that it's real. I, there is an unhealthy relationship that we have with sex. Yeah. Mm. And a very yeah, unhealthy absolutely. relationship and I think that when it comes to like men and women you know the patriarchy and all of that I disagree with many of the points about inequality with men and women but the one that I do agree with is the sexual trauma abuse that's the one that my problem with the patriarchy or whatever is that there's so many other things that I kind of I'm just like I don't mm. really see as yeah. a problem oh, yeah. but that one the, the, the sexual exploitation and things like that that one, I see. Do you see. want me to tell you the reason why that's been caused, though? Why? Because we, we have to understand what is there not many of in our society? Healthy, strong masculines. Mm. What are healthy, strong masculines? Healthy, strong masculines don't rape. Mm. They don't they do They protect. This. Yeah. But healthy, strong masculines have access to their anger. Mm. There is such a thing as sacred anger. Mm. So we take the, pro- the protective characteristic characteristics of a man and go you can't do that and make yes. people feel unsafe agreed and then what we do agreed. is yeah. we make them repress and it comes they up. repress every single strong characteristic that mm. keeps us safe one of the best things i've learned this year in sort of talking about you know shadow work and whatnot is about you know we want for example we want men to be strong we want mm. them to protect us but when we see that um exhibited um or manifested it's in a way that is uncomfortable for us we rather than accepting that i'm not saying extreme violence or sexual violence no yeah i mm. mean we see men fighting mm. or whatever or we see a man raise his voice when mm. he's angry we're immediately put off by that mm. but we need to accept if we it's want a man to bring it. that strong masculine mm. energy and protect us in a in a very sometimes it, it could be a life or death situation mm. we also have to accept that that's going to manifest itself in other aspects yes. as well yeah because this is this was my point when we when we don't accept it mm. we b- repress it and we make men repress themselves mm. what happens to a balloon when it's held underwater too much for too mm. long what does a balloon do when it's held underwater it I'm bursts through the surface close. yeah if you make a man repress his aggression like Eckhart Tolle says, you can't do one thing on one side and not see a counteracting energy yeah. on the other. But shouldn't men take accountability? They're yes. not telling us to take accountability. Yeah, no, no, they no. They need to take they, accountability. But what, what we do is, what we do, and this is the, this is the reason we castrate them, mm. because it's a whole, it's, a, it's an endless cycle. And I think what's happening is, because when we talk about the patriarchy, the patriarchy doesn't exist, let's be honest. I don't think it does. Because mm. if the patriarchy existed, we'd have lots of strong men running around mm. protecting us. Mm. Yeah. yeah. We I don't. Where you're coming from, yeah. yeah. The government don't want a bunch of strong men no, running they around. Don't. No, they don't. You wouldn't need to be governed if you had strong men running around. Strong masculine men protect their feminine. Well, we see they, that in in practice with, in my opinion, and I'm, I'm black and biased, but I think that, you know, blackness holds a very pure masculine and a very pure feminine. And we see it but in... But what does society do to it, black men? Sorry, yeah. but what? I personally feel yeah. that, you know, black people hold a very pure and strong maybe not pure but very strong we exhibit very strong masculine especially in our men i feel a, a complete you know opposite so? i feel like we exhibit strong femininity in the women but the masculinity in the men is off no, the way that we I are think right that, now i know what i mean society is take away, strip away society and all the nuance black people in if you take black people maybe 100 years ago 200 300 it's years very hard ago for me to think in in, in their times. in their um environment is there's a lot of duty that men that are men if you look into our histories in 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 africa and whatnot there's a lot of duty and the same with women they have their own duty it's very pure and it's very tangible whereas in today's society and the whole thing going back and maybe you can add a bit more color to what i'm saying but you know black people um all all life comes from black people Mm -hmm. from from africa from blackness from melanin 
my native people. So I think we we as black people, we, we have that energy, very strong within us. And when you take us out of our environments or influence other environments into our environment, there's this thing where I, I, I strongly believe that there's a very intentional... Um, um, intent to want to suppress that or to completely remove it out of yeah. our nuclear environment. So you see things like um, black men and us, well, impoverished, um, sorry, our environments are more impoverished, our men are incarcerated more, you see things like drugs being introduced into our um, neighbourhoods more, and even just taken out of that, for me, I see it presented in the job, the job sphere, Going to find work is harder for us. They just that systematic racism and whatnot. You know what it's that exists, but then if if the masculinity was there, wouldn't it no. fight it? Wouldn't it protect okay, us what against it as is, women? You create a mm. society where you pull people into survival. People will do absolutely anything in survival, even go against their moral high ground to survive. Mm. That's what society does with money, because if you lack money, you're in the possibilities having to sit in survival mm. where people have to go against their soul to survive in our society but this if is... we had strong masculine men it's built on integrity and morality and it's not there is it it's i don't think it's there in and any I community a lot a lot i see in our community does i mean i don't want to go into like black shit too much yeah. but <laughs> like in our community i feel we do a lot of crying and a lot of woe is me, and I know I've just gone on about the systematic racism and stuff, but really and truly, if you go back to what my country is Nigeria, if you go back to Nigeria, we have it worse there, actually. Mm. Even though we're fighting a lot of things, but nothing's perfect. Mm. No one is born with, with, even the most privileged people still have their yes. own yeah. issues that they deal yes. with too. But this is where so, I feel like as though, you know, and, and this is why I suppose to put the flame under the feet, like black men, I feel as though as a collective, need to step into their masculinity mm. but you have to step out of survival to, to do that maybe and you could be right yeah, but whatever it takes just do it are i'm not interested not in the reasons why exactly. exactly i think we need to just um reconcile with the fact that life is survival yeah. even if it's you, not and and preservation to some it's degree not, it's, as i i well, well you can partly, explain why you don't okay do the reason being is when you are in survival you have to look at the biological standpoints of what's happening within your body yeah that's the thing it's about the nervous system if the nervous system is in a state of survival you're not pulling out the beautiful things that make you feel happy and make you feel creative and think if you are in danger are you thinking of a painting a pretty painting to paint no mm. but your creativity is from the soul if you are in a state of survival you're in a one-track mind of I have to focus on survival. The reason the nervous system is so important is that you have to pull it back to, okay, if we're cavemen, yeah? We're safe, yeah? And we are sitting down around a campfire. The nervous system is activated, the flight or flight system, when there's a tiger over there. When mm. there's a tiger over there, we're only focused on the tiger. This is the thing with our generation. We are over-relying on the nervous system the nervous system doesn't switch off so this is why a lot of people have to go on a journey of self-discovery to find out who they truly are to switch off the nervous system but do we system. ever truly know ourselves though because we are we're, we're never just the same that's, at any given that's one why time. you have to when you start paying attention is you're around me you've never been around me before yeah i'm going to activate certain parts of your nervous system because of how my energy interacts with you. Mm. I'm gonna, in, my energy is going to interact with you depending on my energy and how safe you feel, yeah? It's only when you start to pay attention, do I feel safe with this person or do I not, yeah? But that's all very much reflective on your programming, your experience. If you've come in, let's say you've had a negative experience with someone like me who's very outspoken and you don't feel safe around that energy your nervous system is going to go i don't feel safe so your behaviors are going to switch up and that's but when you sit and think about the subconscious and how powerful it is think of eating a lemon do you feel the tingling on the end of your tongue <laughs> that's how powerful the subconscious is you have to learn what's in there 
to find out what sets your nervous system off. That's unconscious. You don't know that's happening underneath the surface. So if you haven't done the journey of self-discovery, how on earth are you going to tell a man what you need? Mm. Mm. Do you think that you can ever get bogged down too much in that stuff? Not yes. Actually yes. Really. It's, what do you think? It's a lot of work. You have to li- you have to live and you have to do stuff to to really live. Like you can learn all this stuff in the world, but you have to go out and live and meet people and just be a, be a person. That's where most of the learning happens, I think. Mm. You can't just continue to like think and absorb and ruminate. I think that it's a dangerous thing to do. Just go out and and try your best in each situation. Life is doing. It's not sitting around pondering Mm. I want to explore this so there's a lot of talk about I hear this a lot on certain platforms that black women for example well we're going to talk about black women are the bottom of the heap we are the least desired and (laughs) we have this handicap going into (laughs) into the world and I think a lot of black women have internalized that unfortunately Yeah. yeah What is your thoughts? Because obviously there's, there's studies that people will quote for days, like the infamous OK Cupid one where say, saying that women were the mo- black women were the, mo- were the least desired amongst the entire spectrum of different races of men. But it, my, my experience is not that, personally. Yeah. And I think you two can probably attest that that's not yes. the case. Yeah. Um, how true do you think that that speaks? And because you, you, that doesn't apply to you, why do you think that is? So there's two questions there. I'm having a masculine mate. Oh, yeah. what was the first one? Okay, so first question is, do you, I keep it simple, do you agree that black women have a handicap in the dating? No. I, what I do think is we are going through a huge transition right now. Mm. And through that transition from, and, and you have to think, generational change doesn't happen overnight. Mm. I remember being seven years old as a child and crying at the TV because my hair wasn't like anyone else's, Mm. yeah? These things are getting implemented day by day. And this is is why it's a generational thing. Mm -hmm. If you think about, because I remember having a conversation with a friend of mine, a black man, and he actually said, he said, you know what, years ago, I wouldn't look at a Somali woman and think that she's mad attractive. He says, but... Actually, he's seen Maya Jama. He was like, I know that she's not hot, but he says, you, you learn to appreciate. He says, and now I look around and there's beautiful Somali women everywhere. What a lot of people have to do is open up their own brains to actually start to look at the beauty of everything. Mm. Because for you to view someone as beautiful, you have to have a beautiful mind. For you to view someone as ugly, you have to have an ugly mind. Because whatever you're looking for, you are. That's how deep the brain is. Mm. If you're trying to perceive, and when you look at black women, when you even think of melanin as an example, it's condensed sunlight. This is what I tell white men, mixed race men, do you understand how beautiful black skin is? It's condensed sunlight. You know, they say, light creates dark the sun creates your skin Mm. the more sunlight you hold in your skin the darker you are Mm. they start to look at it differently Mm. they start to look at it as a bit more magical and a bit more mystical rather than just seeing something and making a judgment off of it and that's because of our society and how judgmental our society has become mm. we don't actually take time to ponder into other people we don't know how to relate and it goes into everything even with someone's looks and what do you think Andrea? <laughs> to me that's a non it's a non-argument because um i just honestly I, I truly believe like with these kind of things you know people are so quick to throw up stats and Blah, 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 blah. But when you're living in your life, is that really, that, that's not how we live. We don't live according to studies and, you know, stuff like mm. that. So how am I perceiving my life? I have no, you know, that doesn't enter into my thinking, let alone what I'm seeing in the results. And I think that, unfortunately, the way that you present and the way that you are is going to di- is what's going to dictate the response you get from others. If you come in meek and like, 
you, you're not in power of your own self, you're going to get a wishy-washy, lukewarm kind of response from others. And unfortunately, a lot of, I uh, think, black women kind of go in with that mentality. I don't have any problems with any race of, of men. I just don't, like, and I never have. But I think that if you enter into a situation when it comes to something as... Uh, it's so... Um, like, the, 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 when two people connect with energies and something like attraction, it's so nuanced and it's so much about who you are and how you feel. Yeah. So when you enter into that with negativity, you're going to get a poor result. Yeah. I think a lot of black women suffer with low self-esteem. Mm. That's why when I talk about the things I talk about, I often add a thing, like, specifically to black women mm. because we need that love extra, you know? That's why we get the results we get because when you step into the dating uh, pool, whatever, and you step into it with, like with Be, insecurity it's like treat a, you how yeah, you treat it's you. like exactly. a shark with blood in the water right. people know you're talking about your sense of who you are you want someone to accept you for who you are so mm. when you come in with that people sense it mm. and i think that that's why we're seeing things like that come up but believe me black women being attractive has never been a thing being unattractive has never been a thing Absolutely, people want to yeah. it's just it just hasn't i think it's just yeah. the how the the world ignorance yeah, Trans but even so, I think that that ignorance was a result of black women being attractive and then that wanting to be subverted, you know? Mm -hmm. So that yeah. ignorance was yeah, a result of that. It's, it's like the beauty standards, because when we think yeah. about when we were children, like, I was born in 1990, like, so when I was a child, I wasn't looking at black women. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I had, obviously, my dad's side of the family and my mum's side of the family, mm -hmm. and through their own ignorance, it's like, oh, my hair is really difficult mm -hmm. and, and, and things like that. Like yeah. when you, st you still see those videos of those beautiful black girls crying mm -hmm. on their laps because, oh, they, there has to be, there's, for who you actually are, that translates an experience. And if you're seeing things on a generational standpoint, that's also part yeah, of your experience. Yeah, yeah, so that yeah. also needs to be counteracted, yeah. but also how people see. Yeah. If that is kind of pushed into people's viewpoint generationally, people are then going to start viewing things differently. Yeah. I just want all black women to really just stop engaging with things that don't affirm you. Like, yeah. please, yes. just stop doing it. Yeah. Like, yes. It's really that simple. Yes. Like, why are you continuing to put your energy into things that don't affirm you? Like, people that don't affirm you, places that don't... Just stop doing it. Mm. But then It's the your responsibility. Like, stop. And then at the same time, when we say we live in a culture that's supposed to be self-accepting of everything, yeah. there, there becomes that catch-22. Should it affirm me or should it not? Mm. Should, the fact is, I be, it doesn't no, matter. Do, I think we need to be able to um, validate ourselves. That's it. Yeah. Validate yourself. Because you could end up in situations where you, you didn't mean to be in that environment, but you're in an environment that isn't congruent to who you yeah. are yeah. and doesn't affirm you. Yeah. Yeah. But to be able to have that ability to know how to validate ourselves, I think... Is do you that, listen to everyone or do you listen to what you know? And that's the level of being within you. It's necessary. And, and whereas in our society, it points the finger outwards at everything. Yeah. yeah. And when we're teaching people to point the finger outwards, we relinquish control. Yeah. We yeah. relinquish accountability. Yeah. Exactly. And we make everything exactly. that we feel everyone exactly. else's fault. And I'm Absolutely. against it. Yeah. I hate it so much. But the mm. feminine journey is going, do I feel safe in myself? And what do yes. I want? What do yeah. I want? This. What and am I, I going to make, am I going to relinquish my control exactly. and make me feel powerless? Mm. Exactly. Because the feminine journey is very much about you standing exactly. in your power, in your soul self, not survival self, yeah. and going on a soul level, I can act however I want Amen. because I have the potentiality to be anyone I want because nothing defines me. I am pure and utter consciousness and a conduit for the universe. Mm. That's what feminine is. Mm.